Um, the return type is void because we're not returning any values. Functions always return something, and if they don't return anything, then the return type of the function is void. And then parameters or arguments go inside these parentheses. This is a class of object in Java, and this is an array. Okay, so there's our main function, and now we're going to just add a system function to display something to the console. So we're going to go to system out print, and I'm just going to add some double quotes, and we'll look at the the parts of this as well. Okay, this is the dot operator in Java, and it allows us to go up and down and to scope into or out of different objects. So in this case, the system class of object is scoping into out, and then from out we're pulling the method or the function print using the dot operator. Remember, Java is case sensitive, so L capital S, lowercase s would not work there. Lowercase o, capital O would not work there, and so on. Print is a function, and as a function, it takes arguments or parameters. In this case, the argument that it's going to take is a string literal. String literals always go in between double quotes, and I'm going to add two lines. A backslash n is known as an escape sequence. And that just tells the computer to add a carriage return or a line feed. So drop down a line, drop down a line, hello, and another escape sequence, drop down a line, drop down a line. Two more lines. And this is known as a statement or a line of code. And a statement or a line of code in a function or if else structure always terminates or ends with a semicolon. Now that's a statement. A function signature, such as we have up here, would not have a semicolon after it. It's got open and closing braces to designate a block of code. So those are the basic parts of our Java program. Let's save it and see how we would compile it. So if I go over here and I look, I can see right here is my source file, hello.java. But there's no bytecode yet, so I can't run it. So what I have to do to run it is use the command called Java C and I simply need to give it the exact name of my file along with the extension .java. So I type in Java C, I hit enter, and it compiles the file. And now if I use the command dir, you can see that it created the class file or the bytecode file from the plain text ASCII source code file when I ran that command. And what do we mean by that? Well, again, look, this is plain ASCII text. If I open it in a text editor, that's all it is. However, this is binary, and were I to open it, I'll just let you see what it looks like in Notepad. You can see that it's a binary file. All right, it's got specialized formatting. So that's what compiling has done for us. And if I wanted to run the file, I'd simply say Java, hello without the class extension. And that's all it does, it's just displaying hello in the console or the command prompt. Um, I'm going to clear the screen and let's look at a few issues that you might have and, and let's look at how we can use the compiler to show us errors and problems and to help us correct things with our syntax and our logic. First off, what if I couldn't find the file? What would that look like? So I'm going to compile something and I'm just going to type in and I know I don't have a file named banana, it's called hello.java. But let's see what the compiler would tell us. File not found. What if I tried to compile the file without the extension? Class names hello are only accepted if annotation processing is explicitly requested. And again, that's because I didn't pass in the .java extension. Okay. Um, what if I tried to run the file and I include the class extension. Exception in thread main, Java lang, no class definition found error. Again, when I compile it, yes, I use the .java extension, but when I run it with the Java command, I just type in the class name, no .class after. So again. So those are some compiling and running issues you might have. Let's look at some syntax issues. What if I forgot to include my comment tags? And remember, every time you make a change, you have to save the file first and then recompile it. Without comment tags, the compiler is going to try to interpret that as Java code. And it'll tell me, no, that's not valid. It'll give me a syntax error. 
So where I to, I'm going to hit the up arrow because the up arrow will give you the last few commands that you've typed. And Java C hello.java. And now it's telling me inter class interface or enum expected. And the reason is, is it's actually trying to interpret that as code, but it's not. It's simply a comment. So I need to add my comment tags back in there where I to recompile it after I save it. All is well. Okay. So let's look at a, a few other issues. Suppose I leave out the keyword class. We'll just look at some syntax here. I'm hitting the up arrow key. And class interface or enum expected. So it's telling me that, hey, I needed to define a class. What if I didn't call this the same name as the file? The file is called hello.java and I named my class banana. What would happen? Again, let's look at some syntax issues. Class banana is public, should be declared in a file named banana. See where the caret points to the class file here. So again, it's just letting me know, hey, if my class is called hello up here in the file name, then in the ASCII text, it needs to match. What if I used a lowercase h instead of an uppercase h because it's case sensitive? What kind of error would that give? class hello is public should be declared in a file named hello.java so same thing even though to us we look at that and we kind of browse over it we see hello and we see hello computer you know the compiler is seeing two separate objects there so it's case sensitive I need to make sure that it matches what if I were to leave off the keyword static here Okay, everything's all right, and then let's run. Okay, that wasn't a compile error, that was a runtime error. I can have a non-static main function, but the problem is I haven't built this class when I try to call it. This is the very first class, the only class in my project. So it's telling me exception and thread main, no such method error. And that's just another example. So I have to make that static. Um, what if that were a lowercase s? Let's see what would happen. Good Java C, hello Java. Notice where the caret's pointing <coughs> at the lowercase s here because a string class object in Java is a capital S. So it can be very picky. It's a very case sensitive language. Let's look at a few other issues. <coughs> What if I left off the closing quote on my string literal? The problem with this is Java uses the open quote and the closing quote to designate what it calls a string literal. And were I to leave this off, it's going to think that this closing parenthesis, the semicolon, the closing brace here and here are all part of that string. And then it will think I never finished the class and I never finished the function. And it would create all sorts of issues or errors. So let me save that and we'll compile it. And again, let's look at the feedback the compiler will give us. And the compiler caught this one pretty well. It's telling me there's an unclosed string literal. It's pointing to the double quote here. There should be one here, but there's not. So follow the caret when you can. It's also telling me a semicolon is expected. Now there's one there, but because I left off the double quote, it thinks that all of this is part of a string or an argument and not actual code itself. So it thinks it was never completed. And line 10 reached an end of file while parsing. It doesn't see the closing brace of the function or the class. It again thinks those are part of the string literal. So it thinks I forgot to close the class. So you, know, you have to kind of learn to read the compiler or the feedback from it and learn to think the way your computer or the virtual machine does. Um, but in this case, let me add the string, the closing quote back for the string literal.